Facebook's massive user base and ownership of the world's most detailed social graph have opened the door to many opportunities and challenges spanning domains like sentiment, currency, emerging markets, and value creation. What role will Facebook play in commerce in our rapidly changing global economy? What we know from our very short history of living online is that community precedes commerce. There's no commerce without community. What Facebook is doing is sort of blowing up the community to be 500 million or even a billion very soon. When we have a community of a billion, um, that means that the potential for commerce is enormous, is immense. And we've never seen that before. Every comment, like, share, and recommendation that's posted through Facebook adds to its increasingly rich database of public opinion. Users and brands alike can tap into these collective thoughts to better inform their decision making. What Facebook does in, in terms of the economy is that it provides us an opportunity to capture this broad notion of public sentiment. And then that in turn provides businesses an opportunity to create value based off of that uh, understanding of what people really care about, uh, really value in their lives. The sentiment analysis uh, aspect of it can't be undervalued. Um, you know, brand reputation can't be undervalued. Uh, product testing it could be very significant in terms of finding who your biggest fans are, people who talk about you the most, uh, interact with you the most in these pages. Uh, they won't just be brand ambassadors, but they potentially could be early focus groups um, and then uh, sort of see how those rapid pro product cycles are iterated against very quickly. Um, you know, anytime that you create a platform for people to communicate their likes, desires, wishes, um, dislikes, uh, you know, their reviews of things, whether, you know, it's a, a movie or an artist or a band or a new shoe, you know, you, you name the product or service, then there's a way for that to become very relevant commercially. Or if you put sentiment out there that starts to affect the value of real world things, people's salaries, people's livelihood, then, then that's obviously a real concern. Could it be managed? Well, I, I don't think so. This is this is one of the uh, concerns that um, you have from an economic viewpoint in terms of the, the Facebook effect, if you like, that it could have. Facebook is carefully probing the financial transaction space by way of credits, the virtual currency used to buy items in games and applications. Credits will soon be the only way to make a payment on the platform, thus ensuring Facebook profits off of each and every transaction. You know, more people use Facebook um, than probably any other system that has a virtual currency. And so Facebook, just by virtue of that, uh, could become the first uh, world currency provider. As we move later into the decade, physical currency will be harder to differentiate from virtual currencies like Facebook credits. So I think we'll start to see a new economy emerging through social uh, media where uh, virtual currencies will be a very real part of the way people trade and uh, uh, sell information, uh, collaborate on ideas and, uh, and value uh, various products and services that are available. There's enormous potential for transactions in small amounts to be made uh, without as high a processing cost or uh, at least without as high a barrier to usability uh, to the end user. As mobile phones saturate the world, they're enabling the emergence of a nervous system that will allow previously disadvantaged regions to gain access to global social, news, and payments networks in an unprecedented manner. Facebook aims to be the underlying operating system and thus could be a major game changer for emerging markets. What you're going to find in a lot of these emerging markets is that they're skipping generations of infrastructure. So when, when a Facebook utility shows up, it's probably going to show up, um, you know, on mobile. Um, the experience is going to be almost wholly mobile. Facebook has been a pioneer in building out a social layer for the web and making our connections and networks more visible. Many now wonder how Facebook will enable people to harness the power of these networks and their social graph. Turning these tools into something that can help us coordinate action or incent us um, to make things, to go places, to build stuff with other people is um, uh, clearly something that's sitting there waiting to happen. 
Well, Facebook is already you know, a major gaming platform. In fact, it's probably one of the main uses of Facebook is, is to play games, especially social games. One of the next things we might see happen is that um, with Facebook credits, which are already integrated with games and rewards in games, uh, this may spread into the real world where a variety of uh, outside uh, vendors, various businesses, service providers can give us Facebook credits, can enable us to pay with Facebook credits and can reward us with Facebook credits for, for taking actions that, that they, they want us to take. So now that you've got all the people connected, what are the mechanics, what are the incentives, what are the rewards, how do you make it fun for people to do productive things, how do you make it more interesting for people to cooperate on tasks, how do you transfer this freaky kind of information economy to where people can get paid for doing jobs in different ways that might not be working from nine to five down at the factory or at the office, but might be doing something that adds value by promoting something, um, giving feedback on something that makes it better. Facebook is in a position to both facilitate immense social good and also cause massive disruption in our traditional economic institutions or in the way people go about collaborating, forming business ventures, or getting work done. Clearly, regulation will pose a threat if Facebook becomes an effective marketplace for peer-to-peer -peer economic activity, with Facebook credits perhaps acting as a tool for value exchange. There's also the barrier to adoption internationally in countries that don't want their populations to be able to transact across boundaries. And of course, there's the risk of upset in global currency markets as well. As we know, the sentiment around currency is closely tied to its fluctuations in the market. If Facebook credits were to become a more seamless way of exchanging or generating value, it could actually devalue the US dollar or other currencies. We don't know which direction Facebook will go next. They may become more commercialized, providing a targeted platform for advertisers to use games and entertainment as hooks to draw in new customers. Or it might provide opportunities for more ground-up economic activity by facilitating entrepreneurship and small business development in local communities and regions. Either way, we're left with some big questions worth pondering. Is Facebook interested in empowering its users to create value and new business opportunities amongst themselves? Will Facebook credits evolve to be some kind of real-world currency, and how might that open the door for an explosion of peer-to-peer -peer currencies? And finally, as Facebook becomes more of a mobile platform and integrates with commerce in the real world, how might that impact the ability of emerging markets to participate in a piece of the Facebook economy? Only time will tell as the future of Facebook unfolds before us.